Hey, welcome back. So in this video, we'll talk about the diabetes data sets, so essentially importing it, look at some of the features, visualize some things, and really get to know a data set. When I talked previously about different stages in a machine learning project, this is essentially stage two. This is exploring the data, trying to understand some of the features and essentially deciding which features we think are important so that we can later use them for machine learning. So first of all, to do this, we need to have pandas imported. So this is import pan pandas as pd. And we need to get this diabetes data set. The diabetes data set is a standard data set that is included with scikit-learn. So you can just go to sklearn.datasets. Here we have some predefined datasets and you can import the load diabetes. If you autocomplete here, you can see a lot of load like load Boston, load digits and so on. We want the load diabetes. And what you do is to write load diabetes. And here you want to specify that you should return x, y equal true and s frame also equal to true. This essentially ensures that we return the features and the target separately. And this is just that we want to return this as a data frame. I just got this argument from the documentation of load diabetes. This is nothing deep or essentially something you really need to understand that well. It's really just that once I specify X and Y here, you now have the features in X and the targets in Y. So let's maybe run the cell now. And here you can see that we got X and Y. So we can maybe jump down a bit here before we do this and just check out the features. So let me just do X and then the method head. So head lets us view the first five rows in a data frame. And here you can see we have a column for age, a column for sex, for BMI, and some other values as well. So some of these, I think you agree with me, is kind of easy to understand. It's age, sex, and BMI. That's probably understandable. We'll talk a bit more about how someone can has an age of 0 0.03 in a minute, but I just want you to realize that some of these are not that obvious. I mean, can you really tell what S3 means? I can't. Luckily, there is a description that goes with this data set. And the way to get this is to just take your load diabetes here and load it. But once you load it, if you don't have this return X and Y, you can also then access a description which you do like this and let's take the whole thing and just print it out so here we have a description of this diabetes data set so it says that you have 10 baseline variables like age sex bmi and so on and here you can see you have the average blood pressure so that's probably the bp for blood pressure and you have six blood serum measurements these are the s1 to s6 and these were obtained for each of the 242 diabetes patients as well as the response of interest a quantitative measure of the disease progression one year after the baseline so the disease progression is stored in the target value so let's just check out the head as well in here you can see that this has different numbers. So a higher number here means that the disease has progressed further. So it's always good to get, try to get as familiar with the data set as you can by reading descriptions. So this is one of the kind of parts of exploring a data set is to just try to understand it. It says that we have 442 instances, that essentially means 442 rows, and each row correspond to one person. So this person here, for instance, has this kind of age, it has this kind of sex, this kind of BMI, this kind of blood pressure, and these six type of extra variables corresponding to blood serum measurements. Number of attributes, or what I called number of features is 10. It's these 10 that we talked about. The target is essentially column 11. For us, it's really separated into a separate variable here called Y, but this is a quantitative measure of disease progression as we talked about. And here I have some more information about each feature. So you have age in years, BMI, body max index. And here you can see it's so more specialized. So the S3, the one we wondered about, this is HDL or what's called high density lipoproteins. I will not really pretend to really understand what this means, but it is some measurement taken from a blood serum. It says here also a really important note. Each of these 10 feature variables have been mean centered and scaled by the standard deviation, blah, blah, blah. What this essentially tells us, we'll go more into this kind of rescaling later, is that each of these features have been rescaled so that the average value in them is zero. And this is the reason we can have people with an age like 0.03, simply because it's been rescaled. 
And it doesn't mean that the actual person here has an age of 0.03. Of course not. It just means that after rescaling, then this is the appropriate value. We'll talk more about rescaling later, so we won't worry too much about this now. But let's now, since we're more or less finished, and here you can see some references for more information and also the source URL for the data, let's try to move on. Since we got X and Y separately, what we can do is to go into pandas and use the command concat. So this stands for concatenation, and this essentially allows us to concat both this X and Y together. So essentially group them together. You can specify X and Y like this, and we also need to specify axis equals one. And essentially this is the zero axis and this is the first axis. So we want to ensure that they're joined together through this first axis. So let's do call this all variables. To make sure that we did it correctly, let's just do head again. And here you can see that we appended essentially the target just all the way over here. So instead of doing the head, let's do the command describe. That gives us some statistical information. And this is probably a lot to take in. Here you can actually see that for the age value, the mean, so the average value, is essentially some number multiplied by 10 to the minus 16. So this you should view as essentially zero. And the same is for all of these values here. There are just zero, all of them. And the reason is that we read that they were mean centered, meaning that they should have mean zero after this rescaling. So probably for us, the most interesting thing here is the target. And here you can see that the mean for the target is 152. 152 is the average progression of the disease. The minimum progression is 25, while the maximum progression you can find all the way down here, corresponding to this max here, is 346. What you can also do to understand the data better is to plot it. So you can create a histogram, for instance, for the BMI feature, so the body mass index. So what you do is to do all variables and then you use the hist method here. And you need to specify the columns we want to do. So this is the BMI, but we also like to separate this, by, for instance, by sex, to see if there is any differences in males and females. So you can use by sex, and here I got an error. Don't worry, errors is a completely natural part of programming, unfortunately. So we just have to understand what this says. So it says an attribute error. This is an indication to me that I've spelled something here wrongly. So let's go down all the way. It says object has no property columns. Hmm. And then I realized that it, this was not supposed to be columns. But if I look at this hist, the optional argument was a column in singular. So I should remove the S. And here we have our plot. The scales here is of course a bit strange on the x-axis due to this rescaling. But we can see here that for these people, you have kind of a more of a heavier toll here on the back with low BMI. But for these people here, you have a more heavier toll here on the middle and then quickly that goes down in both directions. And I just want to illustrate that now you might ask, wait, but uh, so one of these is male and the other is female, but which is which? You're a bit unsure, so you go up to the notes here, and then you see actually that the attribute information for sex is missing. So that means that you can't really be sure which is which unless you dig into more of the details here. You shouldn't assume that one of these is male and the other is female just based on maybe intuition or something else. You should really be completely clear in what the data actually represents. I won't go digging through this rabbit hole because honestly in the real life you have people that you can ask for this because some people have collected the data and they must know how it was collected. But just make sure that you don't proceed with any arguments or rationales for doing things if you don't really understand how the features are put together. If you don't know if this is males or this is males, this is female or this is female, then you can't really say anything with certainty about what this really tells you. Okay, so this is the histogram for just the BMI itself. Now I want to plot the BMI and age against the target. So again, I go into my all variables here and then I use plot.scatter. And here I need to specify an X property, which is, let's say that's this BMI. I need to specify a Y property. Let's say that that is age. And finally, I need to specify a C for essentially a coloring, and I want to color this by the target. And here you can see something rather interesting. So the target here is the coloring, and the intensity represents the disease progression. And here on the x axis, you're supposed to have the BMI. On the y axis, you're supposed to have the age. And here you can see some interesting features. So if you have all the way over here at the x axis, you have a quite high BMI. And you typically, if you look at the values over it, you can have quite high target values. They're quite dark. If you look at very small BMI, 
like this. Then you have quite light values here. So this indicates that small BMI might correspond to small target values. The same also go with age. So if you go all the way up in the age here, you have maybe slightly darker ones. But if you go all the way down here, you have slightly lighter ones. I would say personally, I think it looks like the BMI correlation is strongest. So once you go high on the BMI scale, you have almost all of these are rather dark, but if you go low, almost all of them are rather light. While the age correlation is somewhat there, I think, but it's less pronounced. So this gives me some indication that the BMI column is definitely related to the target, while the age column is probably related to the target. So I want to select out now some of the features based on this very minimal visualization that I've done, which is incredibly minimal. Let's select only those that I've looked at, namely the BMI and the age, because they both look relevant. So let's say that X, the features I want to consider, is from all variables, and I want to select out two columns. So this is, let's select first age and then BMI. And here when you do panda selection, if you want to select out multiple columns, then you first need to do an open bracket here. Then you need to specify a list inside it. So this is where you get this kind of awkward double brackets here. In any case, we can run this. We can again show the top of X just to show that we're on track. So here is our X. And of course, we still have our Y. So let me just write here, show top of Y. This is Y hat. So now we've done some data exploration. I think we understand why slightly better. We understand that in X now we might focus on the age and BMI. We can understand that BMI at least looks very correlated to the target and hopefully age is slightly as well. So this is kind of a rapid fire look at the data exploration stage. Since this is a course on machine learning, what we want to do and will do in later modules is to take a look at what we've selected from data selection stages like this and this and try to predict the Y values given the values here for, in this case, age and BMI. In the next module, Stina will start looking at such problems by looking at this linear regression model. So I hope you're super stoked for this. I think Stina is going to give an amazing lecture on this, so I hope you enjoy it. And of course, I'll see you again soon as well.